other public school and some other schools. So, uh, you know, sometimes there are doctor's appointments and there's things that it's easier if someone could do it. <clears throat> but that's sort of an exception where you could easily allocate it. And um, I mean, uh, it's good for people to walk a little bit or socialize with other people by riding in their cars. It's good. Certainly, I know you have a green curriculum, but uh, I just hope that you could consider that because. There's no, it's very, we have very few kids, though. I would have to say that drive solo. Usually, the cars have a couple, at least two or three, mostly <coughs> four kids in them. Because like, I see them because they pass my window when they're all leaving and honking and carrying on with that, all that stuff. So I can see. <laughs> yeah, really. So I can see the heads in the cars. And, mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's just kind of okay. <coughs> I mean, we know it won't be popular with the kids, but. Or their parents. <laughs> there are limits. Yes. <coughs> it's good you said limits. Yes. Oh, we know that. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I just thought of something. Um, the sidewalk you're putting in at the uh, uh, the middle school complex in Bedwell. Where is that sidewalk going? It's it's going to be a new construction. Yes, it'd be it's, a new construction. It's where the the one that we have now currently ends, right? It just Kind of ends. So it'd so be coming from Sini Drive, and let's say the, so the pool is on the right side, it would be on the left side. It actually will be oh, on public really? borough property, so we would have to go and work with Yeah, it's a shame we just paved that too. I didn't realize you guys had a. When, when we talked about paving it, we actually brought this up at that time, yeah. and I reviewed it with um, Mr. McDowell, yeah. and it's not really a problem because what we're going to do is it's going to start with the, where the paving ends, it's going to go onto the grassy area from where that paving ends. Okay. So we actually work cognizant. So you'll put curbing in the sidewalk right. there, okay? So it'll clean cut it. Clean cut it and make it. Good. All right. right. So we can do exactly. it. Perfect. Isn't there a sidewalk all the way to Sini Drive from the middle school already on the other side of On the other side there yeah. is, but the, the students, I guess, just because of, you know, either, I don't know if they're, if they're going to the pool or they're going to the, um, it's also, this, this, this recommendation came out of the Joint Borough Committee. Mm -hmm. Which I think you were part of. You were. Uh, I'm sorry. Michael. Uh, that's right, Michael. Sorry. And, and Joe. Joe was um, and Joe, um, of about five years ago. We've been implementing these one at a time. So it's a combination used for rec. It's not just used to get to school, but people that are going to the fields. So just that the kids are on the sidewalk and not next to the. Um, the yeah, yeah, sure. But it seems the kids usually don't walk that way. They walk straight up past Bedwell Playground to get to middle school. Why I don't know. And next year they'll have a basketball complex down there and they can yeah. go play. It'll be perfect. We <laughs> should have more foot traffic there I know. once the courts are finished. Yeah. Great. Anyone else have any questions? Well, thank you very thank much. You great presentation. Thank, thank you. Great, great thank idea. You. And thank you. Thanks a lot of work. We're tired of hearing ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> you probably dream about this. Uh, anyway. yeah. <laughs> thank you again. Bye bye now. Thank you. How are you doing? <clears throat> okay, on um, ordinances. I want to obtain a motion to continue public hearing on ordinance 15 1705, amending the borough firearms ordinance to allow authorized deer management hunt on borough owned properties. And amending chapter 3 of the borough code entitled Police Regulations to October 26, 2015. I have a motion? I'll move. Moved by Mr. DeCourtier. Second. Second by Mr. Smith. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? <coughs> the ayes have it. Um, just for public information, we have not got an answer back to Green Acres yet, so that's what we're waiting for, and that's why we're moving it. Okay. Speaking text, Mayor, they did, I did get an email from the one that so the when will it be? And that's what we got for the public discussion. Oh, okay. Yes. 26. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm sorry? So it be revisited at that time? Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. well, what did you just call What is what did you just call Delaying it. Delaying it. Moving it. Yeah, we have to talk October 26th, yes. Okay? All right. 
I like, yeah. <laughs> nice. If Green Acres doesn't give us the information, there's no sense wasting everyone's time. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. All right, resolutions. Resolutions 15-203 to 15-208. Anybody want to pull any for discussion? Any comments? <coughs> Jack? Yes. I'm going to recuse myself from 203 uh, just because I was involved in the real estate transaction. Okay. I, I think you can leave with the consent agenda because note on the record that you're saying that resolution. Fine. Okay. Ralph, where is on the uh, 15206, do you know where we're putting a new crossing guard? I don't have a location. I think it's just substitute. It's I think substitute. it's an extra. It's yeah, substitute. it's just in case someone so gets sick or is on vacation. It's a substitute. Yeah, it's not uncommon to have substitutes. Okay. So if somebody right. pulls out, you don't have to put a and, yeah, the, and an officer is, is right. filling in. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to move. I'll move. I'll move by Mr. DeBortier. I have a second. Second. Second by Mr. DeLeo, and um, Mr. Young will be abstaining from 15203. Correct. Correct. All right, roll call, please. Mr. Berenbaum? Yes. Mr. DeLeo? Yes. Mr. DeCortere? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Wade? Yes. And Mr. Young? Yes. Okay, item number 6C, Dunster Squibb 501 C update. Dan Lincoln. <laughs> have to swear. Um, Afterwards. Okay, uh, I looked through my files on the 501c3, and we have um, the bylaws, the certificate of incorporation, the IRS letter indicating it's a legitimate 501c3. I have a commercial insurance application, letterhead, and some meeting notes. But some of these things, I've been told they have been updated. I've not been able to confirm them. So that's something that I'll have to get on and make sure that it's all put in place. Uh, just so you know, we did get the next $240,000 grant for Dunster Squid. Uh, I got a call about three weeks ago. And um, that was the full amount we asked. That's the second largest amount we've ever gotten. Um, that brings up the total to about almost 900000 that we've gotten for that uh, project, which is pretty good. Um, in fact, I had a conversation with Tom D'Amico, who's the administrator of the grant program. I indicated that we were having discussions about the switch over to the 501c3 being in charge. Um, he was very comfortable with that. The Historical Society does that with the Berners Township. And uh, Farmstead also is a 501c3 with Berners Township. So they, there's precedence for this. Um, in fact, what he said is, oh, yeah, yeah, with the, no problem. Just make sure your paperwork is good. And then Make sure, I'm sorry. your paperwork is, you know, all lined up. And uh, the, they said, oh, and by the way, the next grant application, uh, this is what you should ask for, which to me is an indication that they're uh, comfortable with this project and want to see us uh, do it. So basically what he asked is get the outside of the main house fixed up. Uh, just so you know that the money that we just got is basically <coughs> fixed, primarily to fix up the barn, is to fix a retaining wall, do some more work on the house. So um, I'm talking to Michael um, Califati, the architect, historic preservation architect, about uh, combining the 140 or so that we got from the previous one with this as one project that we would do together. Um, the uh, 501c3 would be doing an application. Uh, it would be due the end of April of 2016. So basically all this paperwork and stuff has to be in place, including the lease, by certainly the beginning of April. So we can, I can make all the copies and fill out all the, all the forms. Um, do you have anything specific that you'd like to ask? Yes. So what's the timeline to get this completed? But to get this completed, yes. the, uh, it all has to be in place with the um, lease uh -huh. by the end of March. Okay. Jack, can we get this all together by then? Of course. Yeah, we've, we've actually got, got it. We, we have a rough draft. Could we get it done sooner? Of course. <clears throat> but uh, what I think I'm hearing is that you're not sure if all your paperwork is actually uh, inactive. Well, I, or, um, and I don't I've know. had to get some new officers. Huh? I've had to get new officers because some of the people that had done this in the past said, 
you know, retired or, or moved on, so to speak. So that um, I found a new treasurer, which was frankly the, one of the most important parts because mm -hmm. that's going to be a lot of work. What Le Leslie Roberson essentially does will be what the treasurer has to do. So it had to be somebody who's going to be comfortable because that's a fair amount of work. Um, and Sheila Miller's husband, uh, the Millers live right above the property. And Sheila's on the HPAC bidding with me. Her husband has uh, agreed to take over the treasurer's role. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a, uh, a woman um, who lives down on uh, near the bottom of Chestnut in one of the oldest houses in town who's uh, willing to be vice president. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten, we, really, we only need three officers minimum based on the paperwork. Mm -hmm. so, but it took me a while, frankly, to find somebody who's willing to be treasurer. That, as you can imagine, that's so, so one of the they tougher, in... tougher spots. And I asked quite a few people. So are they in office now? Uh, no, but they will be basically as part of the upgrade. Of, this only happened like a month ago okay. when I got them. It's uh, I've been like I said, I've been running around talking to people like, "Hey, how'd you like to do this job? It'll be fun," um, which you can imagine. Anyone who's been treasurer knows that it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Is there a way we can utilize Jack to move this kind of along to help him out? Just make sure he has the proper paperwork right. so it goes through. Sure. Sure. Yes. And I've already prepared the draft, please. Yeah, he, he he was instrumental in setting the thing up in the first place. Yeah, I yeah, actually set up the 501c3 originally. Yeah, but you could look through the paperwork yep. and you could right. easily right. help him out yep. if there's a pinch. Uh -huh. yep. Now the lease is is for one building or all the buildings or. Which, what, what's the lease we're looking at? Well, keep in mind that if it's for uh, one building that would, since we're doing grants for all the buildings, when we apply, the borough is in charge of, say, the barn, because the public works is using the barn. Uh, <coughs> just one example. That means then that the borough would, HPAC would then be doing that grant. So I gather that that would not be something you would all like to do. So therefore, I'm assuming that we would be in charge of all leasing basically all buildings. And, and Jack, Public Works can, st if, if the property is in the 501C, Public Works can still use that? That's, that's just something that has to be worked out in the lease? Yes. Okay. I don't think that's a problem. I know there's concerns about the use of the facility because of possible restrictions that might relate to uh, recreation or historic preservation. Right. You, can't, you can't put a store there. You, know, you can't put a restaurant there. No retail uses. Uh, the, uh, the town could potentially put the rec department there because that relates to recreation. Um, I have uh, been, uh, had interest with several organizations in town about having uh, using the barn area for meeting space because the barn is actually in pretty good condition. And once we get the outside fixed up, it's really just a question of making the bathroom on the first floor, uh, ground floor, I should say, functional and maybe putting some exit signs in there or something like that. So that's that does have potential fairly quickly for uh, at least one room being used. The upper level rooms are in good shape too. There's heat and water there, but the the access to the upper level is a little awkward because you have to kind of there's not really a decent path, and then you got up to the porch and then you get in. But the rooms are in good shape. We, we may have to get green neighbors approval, you know, from our other discussions. Right. So like the uh, garden club has approached me and shown interest. The friends oh, I'm sorry, what? What was, that? what was the last part? Is this something you could ask in your uh, quest yes. for the other questions yes. next week? Yes. Um, the only thing to keep profits. in mind if they're... Uh, that would be, be fine. Not for profit is fine. That's not considered yeah. a diversion. I mean, technically so speaking, the, owner, the, the landlord, so you have to have some say as to, you know, who's there. Okay. Um, but it might effectively, you know, we would have to either revise the lease at some point if, say, hypothetically, the rec, committee, uh, the rec department would be, the lease would probably have to be altered. But that's not uncommon with these things, so. Can you bring us up to speed a little bit on, let's say, over the past year, since the last grant came in, what kind of progress have you made? What, what's been done over there? Because I know oh, it doesn't seem to most residents as you drive by that really much has happened. Well, we have, we, We've not cleared all the bushes. One thing that, oh, just so you know, the roof on the porch, the roof framing was completely redone and re-roofed. The main house has been re-roofed. The dormers have been rebuilt. The uh, building is now weathertight. The um, barn, it's, it's not the main barn, but behind it there's a large flatter roof that, that was all redone. 
and damaged uh, from Mount Sandy, but the big hurricane before that, um, on what we call the stables, if you're looking at the barn to the right of the barn, well, that's the barn complex, but to the right of it is called the stables, and there was a big overhang that was blown down, and that's been repaired and put back. Um, this next grant, uh, not the one I just got, but the previous one that we have, was basically to, is to re-roof the older section of the barn, which is in, in poor shape. It's not actively leaking, but it definitely needs to be replaced. Um, also, the smokehouse and uh, there's some structural work in the, in the house that we're going to be doing also. The new grant is primarily for the barn. Scraping, painting, new windows, fix the trim. Um, and then also uh, some more work in the house. Oh yeah, there's a big stone retaining wall and it's rebuilt to the right of the house. So it's, it's, it's a fair amount of work, but having Michael come in and just do the drawings as one contract and stuff just makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, these grants are good for two years, so that's not going to be a problem. We just have to go talk to Tom and Amico and make sure the county's on board with that. You know, combining two of the grants, which they did in this last round. Uh, is, is no one concerned about the foundation? It looked to me when I walked through there two years ago, even that, that things were caving in. It looked to me uh, there was a crack that was, you know, because of the wetness, it is drying out now, so that has uh, settled down somewhat. Um, if we have to deal with it, we'll have to deal with it. I mean, honestly, that retaining wall that if you're on the street looking at the house, it's this retaining wall right to the right of it, it was not obvious that that was Boeing because the garage, there was like a one-story carport in front of it. We took that down and then you could see the way the ball was falling. These things happen and they just have to be dealt with. But it's all stabilized, so it's supported inside, so there's no real weight on that foundation wall. It's a concrete wall um, in the lowest level that has, a, that has a crack in it. So it has a lot of it has to do with the water and the soil next, next to the building. Um, is that uh, dried out and drained away, then that will be less of a problem. Dan, how are you all doing in terms of fundraising? I'm, I'm concerned that the only source of income on this thing continues to be the county, and if the county says, well, the way that we're done, generally works is we, we, I, one of the other things I do was to find out about the bank account. So um, I have gotten a copy of that the bank. Uh, the fund notice letter, monthly statement, gets sent to me now. So I do have an uh, awareness of you know how much is in there. Um, this all has to be kind of jump started, and, it, and it's hard because for a long time I felt like I'm the only one that's kind of pushing it. So getting a few more people on board uh, is certainly going to help because to create an organization out of you know nothing takes takes some time, takes some effort. And I'm a very busy person, never mind my own business, but being, you know, having head of two other organizations and also involved with the library, uh, sometimes it gets hard to find time for all these things. Um, it may be that since I am the head person on this, that I'm going to have to let something else go in order to really take this by the reins and move it forward. We do an annual fundraising letter. Mostly that was kind of PR. Um, in terms of your question about the county sort of being like, well, we're kind of tired of this, uh, they do look for, um, my long-term or longer-term goal is not so much to raise money locally. That's symbolic in some ways, uh, because to, as I'm involved in fundraising at the library and the historical society, in order to raise a significant amount of money, you really need a lot of people. Uh, raffles, bake sales, those things aren't going to do it. It has to be something like a house tour, that sort of thing. You need, you know, the one we do for the historical society needs like 70 people. So to organize that at that level to make $15,000, say, it's an awful lot of work. So at this point, I'm relying on the county, but the next step is um, the state. Because the state is trying to work their way through uh, money, um, and I don't have all the Terminology, the terminology at my fingertips, but basically they've established um, a fund that's an annual fund instead of a bond. Um, right now the state is kind of fighting over it, like who, who gets it, is it going to be the Department of Parks, not all of it, but like what the percentage is versus uh, projects like this. But that means there is another, or soon will be another source of income that we can rely on. At that point, 
the county would expect us to apply to the state for a grant. Um, having a good track record like we do uh, means the state will take it very seriously and it's very uh, likely that we would get some money if we asked for it. Basically what they do is a matching program, but you see you could take two years of any given time, say if hypothetically it was this year of 240 and the last year, which was I think almost 150, you combine those two years, so that's 390. Did I do that right? Um, and then basically they would match that. So there is the possibility of getting. Well, what happens if the state comes back and says, Burnsville, we're waiting for you to match that? You're saying the state would match the county? This is based on what has happened at the, yeah, they would match the county. This has happened at the farmstead. So the farmstead in Burns Township has primarily raised their funds through the county and the um, state. And you'll be a nonprofit, so Burnsville will have nothing to do with this. Well, you basically, won't they, won't, they won't be looking to the borough. Uh -huh. necessarily to do that no, that's right. but no um, you know if we can indicate you know some fundraising locally that you know to show an effort for it I, mean, I would think that's paramount yeah. um, it's yeah. paramount yeah. actually we jumpstart this yeah because to kind of that's a lot of work and I to get this up and running first is really my, my priority uh, we will conceivably do a fundraising event. We've talked about it, um, you know, something local. We talked about the Ohio, uh, you know, having holding an, an event there. But those sorts of things, you're not going to be making twenty thousand dollars. Do twenty thousand dollars, which would be, you know, something significant, requires a lot of work. And it, once this is sort of up and running, and once kind of make, if I'm getting a gut feeling that we need to start pursuing other, other revenue sources in a big way, then we'll have to do that. But uh, right now, with the county, I mean, what the county basically is saying to me, this is what we want you to apply for for next year. I mean, that's at least for the next couple of years. I'm not I want to ask you a question that yeah. um, is usually asked of students. Okay. Where do you see this in five years? Oh, uh, well, um, I see that in five years, I see the barn being done and usable. So my vision for this, and it's just mine, I mean, this is really open to a lot of people telling me. It doesn't just have to be me sitting here deciding how this is going to be used. Um, these things sort of develop over time in terms of the need. But I could see that the barn could be a pretty active place in terms of meeting. So like our HPAC committee could certainly meet there. Uh, Friends of Historic Burnsville could meet there. The, um, are we short on meeting space? I mean, we are short on meeting space. Are we? I know we, when I was on HPAC, we met over there in the high school in that administration yeah. building. Well, that I did, I instituted that basically to help the school because they were applying for grants. And then they need to uh, indicate that their building is being used. But if we need to show another building that needs to be used, then we will uh, slide over there. I know because of being involved with the library, um, we used to meet there, but they started double booking. So they're really short over there. Um, and in fact, uh, sometimes our uh, friends committee has trouble getting space, so I wanted to make sure that there were alternate locations for meeting space. That's one reason. I guess That's just one of the uses. I guess my concern for something like that is we have lots of empty uh, places for rent in town mm -hmm. uh, at a relatively bargain rate compared to what this will cost roughly per square foot mm -hmm. per meeting space. To me it sounds uh, maybe a little off scale. Um, all I can tell you is that people are, that, well, historic preservation and grant funding, you can't really compare it to like retail rent spaces. I mean, it takes many, many, many years to put together one of these projects and a big commitment. Um, it's not necessarily, it's based on kind of feelings about, I don't want to say the word hysterical, but you know, people have strong emotions about this sort of thing. They want to see half of it. They don't want to just see everything uh, torn down. When I go to the farms, uh, farmers market, a lot of people come up and say how excited they are about the project. Or so those are people it. you need to recruit. Yes, I know, but I have. I get their names and addresses. And write them down. Sooner. Call them up. Well, Jeff, I have your email. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll come to your fundraiser. No problem. <laughs> how much more money do you need to? Uh, to raise to for that lower house? Oh, uh, the lower house, well, just the lower house? Yeah. Because the whole project was estimated at 2.8 million. How much? 
2.8 million, but that includes parking lots. I thought that was even, closer to like 4 million. That was Joe making a number up. It's, it, making a number up. Making a number up. <laughs> and presenting it to us. Because it, it, it wasn't big enough. In, an additional <laughs> two point, or is this, because you no, said something about, no, no, about 900K. It would be a little over, it would be about another 2 million. Another two, because you've got about nine now, right? See, okay. this is why I can't support something like this, because the numbers have been wishy-washy, the numbers are very high, and until we see, like, real numbers and when this project is going to get done, well, and it's I, hard for me to support something like I, this. That's okay. Everyone's entitled to their feelings. Um, but I know that this is going to happen. That's I, I said I would make it happen, and I'm making it happen. And it could take 15 years because I'm at the, at the mercy of the budget of the county or the state or whatever uh, fundraising is possible. Plus, it's a big complex. It's a lot of buildings to take care of, uh, to try to you know, put back together and, and uh, find a use for it. One thing that's helping is the fact that the um, community garden is really being a lot more avidly used. So that means that there's people on the property more than used to be because, um, you know, there has been some vandalism, pretty sure it's uh, kids um, throwing, well, I thought there were rocks, but it turns out there were branches through some of the windows in the barn. And they used to do that sort of thing to the house, but they've kind of stopped now that the house is being fixed up. And uh, I was rather disheartened to go up at the beginning of this year and find the damage now happening at the barn, like, hey, you're not taking care of this. It's like, you know, I bring these, some of these windows home and fix them myself and bring them back and paint them and put them back in place. But the, the idea of the 501c3 is to make it more or less self-funding through the grant process so right. it's not... Right, get, gets us out of that process. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It makes it more optional yeah. for and, us. And yeah. eventually there would be um, an organization like at the farmstead yeah. that would run it. Yeah. That would, would coordinate these. It, it depends a little bit on the uses that are perceived. I mean, I have ideas about how it could be used. There could be a, uh, an annex to the uh, library history room, or the library history room could possibly move there. I mean, they're short on storage space. They are, uh, their room is now being used for tax preparation and, and all other meetings. I mean, but wouldn't you need a special room for that to preserve those articles? And if, if it, it's not but, just a regular room. It's, yeah, it's more mean, work involved. Well, right? HVAC sort of right, thing. Right, yeah, sure. There, there could be, uh, you could probably put a wall unit in mm -hmm. or something like that that would just sort of handle that run room or something like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think it's, it's like a the HEPAS filter system that has to be for the whole building. Okay. But, but again, I mean, if that's what the organization sees fit and that's what they're right. going to raise money for, right. that's yeah. just really yeah. hands off. So. I mean, I see uh, the use has never really concerned me too much because it's at such a great location. And the big problem with some of these types of facilities is like the farmstead, nobody knows where it is because it's kind of off a long driveway off King George Road. So there was a bit of an image problem there that, that it's a little harder to get people invested if they don't even know where it is. This one is... You I know, think your first location. move is to take all those bushes in the front of it and cut them down, I, put some signs up there, I, and yeah. so you get some people involved in it. I have planned to do that, but until really the building was a little bit more presentable, yeah. I've been hesitant to really get in there and clear it up. Um, it sounds like we're going to within a couple of years be at that point and then we can clear that up. Yeah. The, the, down, the downside of that is when it's all painted, then anyone thinks it's done and it's, you know, we'll still be doing a lot of work on the inside. So uh, I just uh, have to caution people not to get too excited. It's Sounds like, like you need people on your committee that uh, no fundraising and promotion. <clears throat> yes, and it's usually the same people who are doing all the other volunteer activities in, in town and are a little overwhelmed. Anyone else? Dan, um, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, I want to thank you for the opportunity to, uh, thank you. to present. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And you're all welcome to email me with any other questions. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, Dan. Dan. Thank you. Item 6D, Cub Scout Rocket Launch. Anyone here from the Cub Scouts? Uh, have you read the rocket launch in the past? Is it something we do usually every year? Yeah, it's yeah. every year. Past. Yeah. So everybody's in favor. We don't have a problem with it. No. no. All right. It's a good program. Uh -huh. Good for the kids. It's actually right. really cool. Yeah. It is. I want to put yeah. this Then there is a parent. Yeah. Well, here, here right. we go. Okay. Six, six E. 
um, parking decal regulations for 2016. Same as last year? Yeah, same well, as last year. Um, I thought like the Ammerman lot was less expensive than... No, a couple of years ago, the council changed it, so they were both the same. Okay. Um, the daily rate at the train station is... Um, That's the kiosk, you know, it's on the kiosk. Yeah, but is there a daily rate? I thought we had a daily rate there. I don't see that on this list. It's 25 cents an hour. The commuter? It's 25 cents an hour, and that's it? Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 25 cents an hour. Oh, here, it's loaded. And that's from 8 a.m. or 7, or what are the hours? How many hours? They're there. No, but I, the meters are only in effect during certain hours, aren't they? No. That's their that's spots. That's, that's a map. That's the transit spots. Well, there, yes, oh, there is a... Oh, you have to go it. It, That's in an ordinance. What? The hours are in, in an ordinance. Okay, so what are the hours? I would have to look at the ordinance. I, okay, I think it's till sometime in the evening. I forget. Did, um, in terms of this, um, I think it's six. was any anybody look at the other towns in approximately the same distance and so on? That was done a couple of years ago. Yeah. With the, um, I have okay. over and over again. Two years ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Not good this year, but okay. Well, uh, I, I have one question for you. Um, the Mount Airy daily fee. We put that into this resolution years ago before we had the um, uh, kiosk at the railroad station line. I just and and I have not had a request for this in several years, so. I wondered if you want to leave that in there. Might as well leave it in there as an option mm -hmm. if it's ever used. Once they get finished with Mount Airy Road, yep. we start using more of that parking area. I'd like to just suggest that the fees are um, very, very low. Um, and I just did a quick look um, before on uh, Denville, Dover, Mars Plains, which are about the same length of uh, travel time, although there are more expresses on those lines. Um, and um, for annuals, those are in, they're all about $480 a year. Wow. And for dailies, um, they're all um, 3 to $5 a day. And um, I mean, on the annual, we're really, really low. <clears throat> um, Mm. I'd like to suggest. Reduce the fees? I'd like to suggest it be four hundred dollars a year, or three, then maybe three hundred for now. And we need, do need the revenue to par pay that you know parking lot, and this is basically a user fee to help offset the maintenance of those lots. <clears throat> and the, uh, you know, we should perhaps have a daily rate for the parkers that are there for the day. Um, the ones that are getting more money most likely are because they have Midtown direct service. You don't have to change and sign it. So people probably feel that if they're going to drive from here to, let's say, Convent Station, which is what I do sometimes, park <coughs> there and it's willing to pay more because of the service instead of the change of trains. Yeah, but then there, you're probably doing that as a daily because you can't necessarily get a, uh, um, a permit for those pl places because typically the ones that are heavily used because of Midtown direct don't necessarily right. allow out-of-town people to use it, they sometimes allocate it to the residents first. How many, um, <clears throat> how many uh, annual decals did we sell last year? I don't have those numbers with me. It's, I, I have to look. We did not sell out. No, nope. um, we never sell out. And the last time the fees changed, council reduced it. The last fee, I think, was 275 and it was reduced. And did we get more, um, no. stayed the same, right? No. I, I don't think there's a... Well, is you know, there any risk that if we go from two to three, our numbers are going to go down? I, well, we brought up uh, from one to two the businesses because we didn't right. have parity there last time. Right. Yeah, so right. we, and there was a lot of complaining, as you mm -hmm. recall, about the big increase, um, a big jump in that. Day. Well, if you reduce the fee, you didn't get any more users. Um, and Putting it back to where it was, I don't think you'll exactly lose users. And net net is you'd have to lose you'd have to lose um, uh, at least a third of your users to um, just to be never revenue neutral, and that doesn't seem very likely. And you're not proposing changing the merchant decal, no. just the annual commuter. Absolutely. Since we don't have all the numbers on tonight and how many we sold. And 
you know, in comparison, would you like to take it back to committee, to finance and I'm public works it's and look at it? Something like four hundred. That this didn't come to finance, is it? Like no, this didn't come to like public works either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We should find out what's going on in Four Hills. I know. think that's where this number came from. I think we looked at I think we looked locally. towns yeah. along, the yeah. along the run. A year the Gladstone so ago, branch. Yeah. A year or so ago, we did a complete survey, and then it was the decision that we wanted to lower it. We should put this reason. off until we well, find out what's well, going we, on we in Gladstone branch. We lost a lot of people when Four Hills upgraded their train station. But yeah. And KPEC, uh, Gladstone, the parking there is free because it's a New Jersey transit lot. Right. It's also so. in the wrong direction. So, um, and, and those lots get extremely full. They get over, they're overcrowded. So those people have to go someplace else. Yeah. Um, years ago, there used to be a line for parking decals. We just don't see the demand that we used to have. Well, the whole employment. Yeah. There's people yeah. work from home, they work remotely, you know, they travel, so <clears throat> that's all changed. But I don't think that $100 um, is actually for a year is uh, going to damage anybody. I agree. I just like to see how many we're selling. So we can well, I can get those numbers for you very easily and put this back on the next agenda. Sounds good. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, I like it. For the uh -huh. Anybody else want to use that? Yeah, numbers? can we find out what... Uh, the two stops in Baskin Ridge charge? Sure. Uh, Lions and one of them's free, I know for sure. Yeah, any New Jersey transit property is free. They're just providing parking for the riders. And I think the Baskin Ridge station is, has a fee. Lions is for free. No, I think it's, it's for free. The opposite. It's Lions is free. Baskin Ridge is, I believe, it's, I think it's free. Um, I will go okay. ahead and order decals if the only thing in dispute is the fee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, correspondence. Seeing that we have none. Um, any council members have one other thing. Uh, yes. There's, um, we know we have a big problem, I think, on collecting these fees because the machine is always broken. Uh, it doesn't take cards and it doesn't give change. Uh, is that New Jersey Transit? You're talking that's the kiosk? That's the police department. That's the police department. Mm -hmm. I think we need to, uh, well, we'll talk about that in the finance center. Yeah. Anyone else from the council? Nope. All right, I'm um, moving to closed session. I will be discussing on um, collective bargaining personnel matters, pending anticipated lit litigation and property acquisition and possibly some redevelopment plans, um, which we may come out and vote on um, after the executive session. I'll move. Move by Mr. Duke here. Second by Mr. Fairbairn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? No. The yeah, ayes have. Thank you. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. Good night.